The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Ingenia Herbicide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. I'm Kelvin Hepner for Real Agriculture and joined on this episode of the Soybean School by Jeanette Goche of BASF and Jeanette talking about fertility in soybeans heading into the, the growing season. Uh, we've of course heard some discussion out of Ontario when it comes to do we need to fertilize our beans? How do we make that, that decision? Here in the West there are some different things to consider. Yep, and actually I watched the Real Ag episode with Horse Bonner and it's interesting that despite how different we are, that message is really on point for the West as well. So I would say if you're interested, go check that one out. Um, But yeah, there are definitely some differences and a few things that pop to mind are maybe iron deficiency, chlorosis, and maybe the way that we look at inoculation. Okay, so with IDC there isn't really anything we can do about it other than genetic selection which variety you select that is that the message that's right it's really not a fertility problem and really we see it in the west and not the east uh, because of our soil properties so it's uh, the presence of calcium and magnesium in those alkaline soil phs that just tie up that iron and that's why we see the iron deficiency chlorosis uh, not because the iron's not necessarily there And so, yeah, there's some work done, maybe looking at chelated irons, but typically we find that actually just choosing a a soybean variety that has good tolerance to IDC is probably the best way to go. And I don't have a copy here with me, but in uh, your seed Manitoba, that's a great place to look. Uh, Manitoba Agriculture, in partnership with the Manitoba Pulse and Soybean Growers, do a really good job of of looking at all the different varieties, giving them an IDC score so that growers can choose the best uh, depending on what the risk is for a field for IDC. Okay, shifting then to inoculation. Uh, Here in the West, I guess we have more just on time inoculating happening on farm or, or just as you pick up the seed kind of thing? That's exactly what I'd call it. It's definitely not picking up that bag of pre-treated, pre-inoculated seed. Um, So it definitely gives us some flexibility or maybe some different options. And then that ties in well with, we definitely have equipment differences out west here too. So maybe 30% of our acres, soybean acres are are planted. I can say planted. Um, Whereas the rest would be solid seeded. So this ties into what some of our options are too. So again, those commercial treaters are often putting on uh, a liquid on seed when they're doing the seed treatment. And then the other options that can tie in would be a granular, which is an option with our seeders. Not so much with a planter, but they might be looking at uh, in furrow liquid, for example. Okay. So this year, again, well, maybe even more so than the last few years, we have extreme scenarios across the prairies. Here in Manitoba, we have soils that have been saturated for, for weeks here in spring. Uh, out west, further west, it's extreme drought again. Uh, how do we factor that into our decisions around inoculation? Yeah, we've definitely, as soybeans have become a bigger part of, uh, I I guess, the western crop rotation in areas of the west. We've definitely moved away from just recommending double inoculation right off the hop to maybe looking at a risk-based strategy. So if your inoculation is like an insurance policy, then double inoculation would be your premium package where you have the least amount of risk. Uh, Single inoculation would be kind of that middle of the road. And then no inoculation would be the riskiest. And for sure, we definitely have had soybeans long enough now that we are probably building up some residual populations. But as you mentioned, um, too dry is something that we hadn't really considered. But the last few years, we've actually seen some lines in the field where there's been single inoculation versus double inoculation. So just maybe, you know, seed going into really dry soil, just maybe desiccating a little bit. And then we have definitely weathered some really wet years with soybeans and we do know they are aerobic uh, bacterium so they do need air and so if there is standing water in fields for 
longer periods of time, you know, over 24 hours, we know that those populations are going to be impacted. So definitely like to look at that. Um, we know that they're not native here. We do have a, a longer crop rotation than other soybean growing areas as well. So I think it'll be a unique decision to every farm, but we do have a lot of options. Mm. All right. Any other tips then as we head into planting time, Jeanette? I don't mean to end on a Debbie Downer note, but we always say that you have one shot at getting it right off the hop. So, you know, it's just to be proactive when choosing a soybean variety to manage IDC and definitely thinking out your inoculation strategy before that seed goes into the ground. All right. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> awesome, yes. <laughs> Did it for me. <laughs>